For this project, you're going to need one skein of yarn, 100 grams, and a 5 millimeter hook, or size H hook. And this is regular worsted weight yarn that you'll need. This is a little bit thicker, but for this project, you're going to need uh, regular worsted weight yarn. Four ply for the U.S., ten ply for Australia. So what you need to do to start off is to chain 70. So chain 70 loosely. Don't, uh, don't make it so tight. And like I said, this yarn I'm using is a bit thicker, but it's just in hopes that you can see the stitches and everything better. So just chain 70, and I will see you back here in a moment. Okay, I only chained 30, but for your hat, you need to chain 70. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm only going to chain 30 just so I can show you what you need to do next. So what you do is you layer chain flat. Make sure you can follow it down with your thumb like this, just to make sure that the chain is not twisted. And when you get to the end, you want to put your hook into the single loop at the top, leaving you two loops on the other side. And then, whenever you turn your chain like this to form your ring, your two loops will end up at the top. And all you're going to do is just slip stitch in that beginning chain. Now you have two stitches on the top of the first chain. Now for the next is you want a single crochet and the stitch to the left or if you're left handed to the right of the beginning stitch. So just next to you'll go under the top loop only and you'll single crochet. And I'm going to hide my tail as I go. So you're going to do a single crochet. And you're going to continue using just that top loop and single crochet in each stitch around. And you began with 70, but when you single crochet into the next stitch here, you'll have 69 at the end. You should have 69 stitches at the end of this round. So just continue to single crochet all the way around, and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, I just came up to the very last stitch. This is where we slip stitched into, and this is our very first single crochet of the round. When you've got your ring done, you want to lay it flat and make sure that it's all going one direction. You don't want any twist in this ring. And what you'll do is you'll skip this single crochet I mean the slip stitch and go right into the first single crochet of the round. So I'm going to skip this stitch and single crochet going under both loops and do a single crochet. And count your stitches. Make sure that you have 69 I'm going to place my marker, marking the beginning of my round, my very first stitch of the round. So for round two of our rim, you want to single crochet into the first seven. And you single crochet in your first single crochet of the round, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six and seven so single crochet seven and then you want to do a single crochet decrease and how you do that is you go into the next stitch and pull up a loop and then you go into the following stitch and pull up a loop now you have loops coming from two stitches and then you yarn over and you pull through all three loops And then you want to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet, seven, and then do one single crochet decrease. 
So I have three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I want to do my single crochet decrease. Just like that. And you want to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet seven and then do a single crochet decrease. And you'll want to repeat that until you get back up to your marker here, your first stitch of the round. Okay, I'm back up to my first stitch of the round. And for round three, you're going to be repeating what you did in round, for round two. So if you, you single crochet it all the way up to the end, and you have seven stitches, then the next stitch do a decrease. I started with 30 stitches just for this tutorial, so I have three single crochets leading up to my end. So I need to single crochet four more before I do my single crochet decrease. So just continue on like you did last time, I mean the last row single crochet seven and then do a single crochet decrease and when you get back to almost the end of your row count your stitches you need to stop decreasing once you have 56 stitches it's just single crochet the rest of the round okay I just finished up round three don't forget to count it's very important now if you're making this hat for a man, you should check. And um, if, if he lives with you or you're near him, uh, check to see if it would be too tight. Because if it is, this is the, the time that you can adjust it to fit the person. But the good thing about doing the rim the way we are now is because even if later on you find out that your hat is too tight, you can loosen it some. So and if you are short on the yarn that you used you can just do one row less of uh... you know you can just do four for the band instead of five so once you get to the end of round three then for the next two rounds just to we're making uh... the size of the band now so you can go as thick as you want once you have the right size so you could do two more rows making it five rows of a rim or you know do another one and and add six or seven but you're going to be doing a row of single crochets over the other side of the chain here which will give you six rows total for the rim so just keep that in mind when you're deciding how thick you want it's automatically going to be six rows so for this row which is round um, four and also the next round you're just going to be putting one single crochet in each stitch around okay when you've reached the last stitch on round five you want to slip stitch in the beginning stitch of the round and then chain one and now what I like to do to give my uh, hat a nice finish is I like to do the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. You can call it either either one. And what it is is you're going to be doing like a single crochet like you normally would. Pull up a loop, pull through both loops. The only difference is you're going to be working the opposite direction. So you're going to be going back to the stitches that you just made and it changes your hook and the way you grab the, the yarn slightly so it just takes time to get used to what you want to do is go into the next stitch like you normally would if you were going this direction and then grab and pull some yarn through that stitch and now you can see you have two loops on your hook and then you just yarn over and pull through those two hook, two loops like you would a normal single crochet. The only difference just to get used to grabbing the yarn. It's easy enough to put your hook inside the next stitch. And then I just kind of I'm holding my yarn like I usually do. I just grab it 
to the side and pull it through. Just pull it up like this. And then pull through two. You do five reverse single crochets normally in each stitch and then at, on the sixth one just skip one stitch and then work it into the next skip a stitch and it will reduce your rim slightly and prevent it from getting that stretched look I just want to show you what the stitch looks like you can see that has kind of a bumpy look going and this will be all the way around the hat or give it a nice look so that you can't actually see the stitches anymore. So continue that all the way around and when you get to the last stitch, which would be your beginning stitch here, I'll show you how to finish the round. Okay, now I just did my last reverse single crochet here and this was my very first where I slip stitch into chain one and then I did my first crab stitch. So you want to slip stitch in this beginning stitch. So you're just going to go into the next stitch, grab up some yarn, pull up, slip stitch, then you'll chain one and cut your yarn. Cut it long enough to where you can work in your tail with a tapestry needle. Because you don't want to have any tails sticking out the front of the hat where it's the most noticeable because people are wearing it on their head. So what I do is I thread my tapestry needle and I turn where the back is facing me and I just follow down my crab stitches. Four or five crab stitches. And I'll pull my yarn through. And you can pull it to tighten this area here in between and then just slightly tug it and then you want to cut any excess yarn that you have now like I told you before we're going to now this is the bottom this is our original chain we're now going to be working in the other side of the chain so Get your, your needle, your needle, your hook, and do your slip knot again. And it doesn't matter where you start. I would suggest starting somewhere away from here because you don't want to keep, you know, going and beginning in the same spot because then you'll have a line. So anytime that you can begin somewhere else. So, you want to insert your hook going under one loop only. You're only going to be working through the single loop. And you want to do a single crochet attachment. So, you're just going to pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through both those loops. And that's a single crochet attachment. And it also counts as your first single crochet. So, I'm moving my tail to the back here. And now again, I'm going through only one of the loops on the top like that. I'm doing a single crochet. And you want to work one single crochet going through those top loops only all the way around. When you get back up here to the beginning, then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I just did my last single crochet of my round. And what you want to do is slip stitch into the first stitch of the round and chain one. And now you want to move your marker. here to mark your place. Okay, I just finished my six rows. My band 
Now I want to switch to my 5.5 millimeter hook or my size I hook and I'm going to start my butterfly stitch. What you do is you go in through the next stitch, pull up a loop, go through one of the loops, then you go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, go through two, go through two. Essentially, you double crochet. And then you chain one, you go in through the next, you essentially chain one using half the stitch, then you go in through the next, and you double crochet. Then you chain one. Always make sure you chain one after. If not, then you would be decreasing. So go into the next stitch, pull through one loop, go through the next stitch, three loops on the hook, go through two, go through two, then chain one. And that completes your butterfly stitch. And continue to do that all the way around until you get back to the beginning. I wanted to show you real quick a new way to end the round. What you want to do is go into the very last stitch of the round like you normally would, but we're also going to be using the long stitch on the end. So go into that last, very last stitch of the round and then end your stitch into this long big stitch that was created the first time you did your butterfly stitch. You want to end your butterfly stitch into this stitch. And by doing that it will continue to be one round without any line going through it. But make sure now that it's a continuous round that you go ahead and you mark this beginning stitch. And that's it. Then you continue to work in the butterfly wings as normal you're going to be doing the same thing except you're going to be using the, the wings of the butterfly. You'll go into no need to, to chain. I don't chain at the beginning. I just go in through the front. The first wing chain one. Then I go in through the next wing and then I do my double crochet. Then you chain one. And just like in this previous round, this is going to be the stitch that you slip stitch into at the end of the round. And you'll just continue to do the stitch for, uh, if you're going to make an adult size, it's going to be 25 centimeters. But um, if you're making a smaller hat, I'm going to have all this on my webpage. And I'll have a link to my webpage in the description of this video. And you can see all the sizes and, uh, and inches and the centimeters and um, it'll have all the information there for you. Again I want to show you how to do the butterfly stitch using the butterfly. Go into the first wing, you chain one and then you complete the stitch by going in through the other wing. Do a double crochet, chain one and then just continue to do it. And every round you slip stitch at the beginning and continue on and I'm going to be doing this until it reaches 25 centimeters and I believe that's 17 inches. I'm not 100% but um, you can always easily find out and I can check it out and when I come back I'll tell you in, in, in inches as well. Okay real quick I looked it up 25 centimeters uh, in inches is 9.8 so it'll be 10 inches so when you get this to 10 inches then I'll come back and I'll show you how to, to close off your hat wanted to show you, I forgot there's something uh, different about round two of doing the butterfly stitch than um, first round. You want to do the last stitch of the round. This is the place that you slip stitched in at the end of the round and it creates a little hole here. See? This is the stitch you want to slip stitch into. But you want to do the last butterfly stitch using this little hole here. So you'll go in through this first hole and do the first part of the stitch and then you want to go into this little hole here, pull up a loop and finish the stitch with that one. And chain one, 
and then you slip stitch into that beginning stitch and you'll do that for every round, every end of the round. Okay, I just got done with my 25 centimeters or 10 inches and now I want to show you how to finish the hat. Once you get to the end of the row like I did here, you want to go ahead and start single, single crocheting in each stitch so go ahead and single crochet each stitch around till you get back to the beginning and I'm going to go ahead and move my marker here from the bottom to the top single crochet around uh, this row and I'll see you back here in a minute. I just got to the end of my row and now for this next round I want you to go through each do a decrease stitch and then do a single crochet then do a decrease stitch and then do a single crochet and continue to decrease every other stitch and single crochet every other stitch and I'll see you back here. Okay I'm at the end of my decrease round and for the next two rounds just single crochet in each stitch around and then after that do another decrease round so single crochet all stitches around for two rows and then I'll see you back here. Okay, I just finished my two rows of single crochet and again you want to do a row of decrease. Do the one decrease stitch, one single crochet. And then after this decrease stitch, um, decrease row, do a row of of single crochet. Okay, I did my decrease round and my round of single crochet and now I'm gonna go ahead and do one more round of single crochet and then I'm gonna show you how to finish up this hat. Okay, I did my last row here. I'm gonna go ahead and get to the next stitch and just slip stitch chain one. Leave yourself uh, a bit of a tail here to sew your hat shut at the top. Get your tapestry needle and what I do is I'll like you're making a pull string. You go in through one then you go back through the next stitch and then back through the stitch and then into the next stitch. Just going back and forth. I go through about four stitches and then I pull the string tight. And if you guys have made one of these hats, I would love to see it on my blog. I would love to see the stitch done in many colors. I did end up discovering how to make a, a beanie. I haven't perfected it yet, but as soon as I do, I'll finish the pattern and get a tutorial out to you guys. Okay, so here at the end, I'm going to go ahead and pull mine. Okay, now here I'm at the end. 
I'm going to go ahead and feed my hook down through the middle, turn my hat inside out, finish pulling my needle through, and then you just want to pull to tighten up the hat. And then I just go through one end of the hole to the other. Pull through until you have a little bit of a loop left. Put your needle through it and pull tight. And it's going to create a, a knot. I should like to do that about three times just to make sure that my hole isn't going to come out. I like to also actually tie a few knots into my hat. What I do is I'll just pull and just use the slope to just tie a knot or two in there because you really don't want your hat to come loose. We'll cut it and then you just work in your ends. And that's it. That's how you make your your butterfly saw chat. If you like this tutorial, please click like. Uh, it really helps me out to get the word out and share the links. And please don't forget to subscribe.